guys, this is Trinisha Cottrell, and thank you for joining me for day. It's going to be something else, another chapter, another season. So today I wanted to talk about I messed up. <laughs> well, thank you for your consideration and, and for being, you know, not so harsh on the things that I do in my life. <laughs> but what made me want to call this I mess up is because sometimes in life, <laughs> When we are making decisions in our life, it's not always the best decision. And I initially was going to call it you messed up, but I didn't want to point the finger at anyone because we all mess up. And I was learning a lot about self-love today and different ways to love yourself, different ways that you should treat yourself. And one of the things that really came in mind, one of the things that really allowed me to start thinking about things in a different perspective or a different light was that I was I was listening to this sermon at first and it was talking about the way that God loves and it was I wrote it down on a note card because I didn't want anyone to get the wrong message and I want them to be able to relook look look it back up later so it's first Corinthians 4 through 8 and that's the one that says love is patient it's kind you know it's not envious it doesn't keep records of wrongs you know and so on and so forth and the pastor said, in the place of putting love, put your name. And I was like, you know what? That is a really good thing to cite every day. It's a good affirmation. It's a good thing to just constantly keep telling yourself because the more that you speak life into yourself, the better you are, the more confident that you are, the more sure of yourself you are, the more secure you are. And so as I was reading it, I was like, this reminded me of an old sermon where the pastor said, put God in that place. And if God is love, what better of an example could we have than that? And also, it started to make me think about relationships. I know for some reason it always circles back around to relationships, but I feel like it's because no matter what you're doing, you're always going to be in some sort of relationship or some sort of ship. You're going to be in a friendship. You know, you're going to be in a, a workship, <laughs> a work relationship, working relationship. You're going to be in a romantic relationship. There's some sort of relationship that you're always going to have in your life. And <laughs> when I started thinking about how you want to be treated, how I personally want to be treated in a relationship, I thought about the things that were hard passes, things that I really do want or aspire to have in a person in the future. I started to think about things that that really matter to me, like not just little preferences that you have about someone's height or something like that, but real things that really matter, like somebody's core values, you know? And as I started to think about these things, it started making me think about the, the types of men that God allowed to be a part of my life, whether it's uncles or someone that I've met, you know, in the past two years that, you know, we've been talking or getting to know each other or whatever else. And at the beginning or during some part in this stage, I met a lot of people who we just weren't a good fit. And it was because we wanted different things or whatever else. And then there has been like a very few guys. I don't know why I said very few like that, but there's been like one or two guys or each person has taught me something about myself. And they didn't do it intentionally. I think that God allowed those guys to be a part of my life so that they can teach me something about me. They could teach me areas where I wasn't healed. You know, when I first started thinking I needed to rush to be in a relationship because, you know, someone else was saying, well, you're single, you're, you're beautiful and you're single. So you have to be with someone. And I wasn't ready. I knew I wasn't ready when they said it, but I was thinking, okay, well, how will I even know if I'm ready? You know, and so I decided to just jump head first into this whole decision to start dating. And I was absolutely 100% not ready. And in turn, you know, when you're not ready, sometimes you hurt people you don't intend to hurt. Sometimes, and it's not that you're intentionally like a facetious person or someone who's who has ill intent or anything like that. It's just that when you're not healed, hurt people hurt people. It really is true. And that could not even be your, that could be the furthest thing from your mind, not even your intention. And because you're hurting, you're not intentionally like, oh, I'm going to hurt this person because I'm hurting. You start pushing people away in areas where they might be trying to get to know you. You start saying things to push people away because you know that most people won't take well to that. 
And so you like do different things in your life to try to make sure that people don't get close enough to you because you're not ready. And so it's really important for you to know when you are ready and not just to jump into a relationship or just start talking to someone just because it's been five years, two years, whatever time it's been. It doesn't matter if it's not enough time for you. You have to go on what time is right for you. So I met a guy who was kind. I didn't know that kind guys existed. I know people are going to be like, what? Of course there's kind guys because there's good people and bad people. But listen, in the past, and I feel like I could be transparent right here. In the past, I've only dated, talked to, known guys who are not the nicest. (laughs) And I don't mean I haven't had a, a nice boyfriend in the past. I just didn't know that there could be a nice guy. Like I thought that every guy was like that. And when I say every, I hate to put a blanket statement on a gender because every person is completely different. And most, some of the guys in the past could have been a nice person, but maybe I was just so used to being treated a certain way or accepting less when I I know now that I deserve way more than that, you know? And so it's all about your perce- perception too and your growth which is why it's so important to start the healing process, Why, which is why it's so important for you to focus on you. Because when you focus on the areas in, in your life that you want to lay at God's feet, the areas of your life where you are still hurting or areas of your life where you're still struggling or you're still negative or whatever it is, when you're doing things like that, you really have to be intentional. You have to face it head on. And I don't mean jump into something in a situation quickly. I mean, when you are like, okay, I'm going to start healing. You have to read books on healing. Or if you're not a reader, listen to audiobooks or listen to a podcast or something that is feeding your mind so that you can learn how to do things differently in the future. And it's so easy, like we were talking about in yesterday's video. And if you missed it, go watch it and then come back. And so it's so easy to point the finger at somebody else and say, well, they didn't do something. But when you really can acknowledge your own flaws, that's when you're ready to start healing. That's when you're ready to start doing different things in your life. Like for me, I did that at the beginning of my healing journey. And then I started to feel like, uh, <laughs> you know, I started to feel like, well, you know, I, I still had this big giant wall up. I had like a, my heart was guarded and I had a fence, like a metal fence with like, <laughs> with vicious animals around it, just like keeping out anybody that could even get in. And they couldn't even find a door to get through. Like it wasn't like a fence with a door so I can let the right person in the fence and still have my heart guarded. It was literally like soon as somebody would get a little closer, try to find out any information, I was pushing them away so hard. And it was because I wasn't ready. And I think you have to we have to be real with ourselves and saying when we aren't when we aren't ready and not just for somebody else, just because, you know, your friends and family, they mean, well, they really do. But you have to go by what it is that that you want for your life, what it is that you look like at your best for your life, not what someone else picked out for you, not what someone else looks like. You have to be focused on you because that's the only way you're going to grow. You're not going to grow if you keep looking at somebody else's process and where they are because you're going to feel like you're not doing anything in your life. And the whole time you're moving forward, you're just not moving in their their path. (laughs) You know, this is their path. That's for them. It's not your path, (laughs) you know? So you got to stay focused on where God is taking you and not where God is taking somebody else because their story is going to be completely different. Even if you grew up in the same neighborhood, you have to know that you're different. And so as I started meeting different people, I met one guy who was nice and I was like, oh, wow, didn't know that nice guys existed, you know? And then I started meeting guys who were I don't want to say intentional, but they were pursuant. And I was like, okay, I didn't know guys pursued you like this. Then I started to learn, okay, there's guys who are actually intentional. You know, there's guys who will, the things that I asked for in the beginning when I first started dating, that one guy was like, "Ah, that's ridiculous. What? You would ask for something like that? I would meet a new guy and he would be like, oh yeah, of course. Like, Obviously, if I want to get to know you, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not just going to, you know, and but 
you know, you have to really go by action, not just somebody's words. So you have to make sure that each person that's saying things is actually stepping up to what it is that they're saying, because a man of their word is, they got it going on. I don't know how else to put it. Like, it's something about, (laughs) I don't know if it's because of this age or what, but when you meet a guy who really is a man of their word, who really is about that action, Something in my soul. <laughs> Something. <laughs> it really, it's just like a whole, I don't even know, but it's its a whole nother, it's a different level. Like, <laughs> it's not even like, <laughs> whew, like, okay, yeah, it's just, it's nice. And so <laughs> that's the thing. And then you got people who are actually willing to do certain things, like who who won't just say they're going to do stuff, but actually go through and do what it is that they say they're going to do. So I've met each one of those types of men that I didn't know existed before. And I I mean, I hear a lot of guys say things and not be about action. But to meet a person who is like, okay, you know, this is something that I'm not okay with and to respect my boundaries is I've never had a guy respect my boundaries, but I don't know if it's just because I don't, I haven't really dated a lot of guys in the past. And so for the past 17, well, before I started dating for the past 15 years, I was only with one guy, you know, there was only one guy that was dating, getting to know everything else. And so, I mean, in a relationship with, and so we, we were together, we got married, everything else. Right. But And in that span, in the span of like 10 years, because, you know, when we were in high school, we did the off and on thing. And then we got together. We stayed together for about 10, 11 years, something like that. And so it just (laughs) I hadn't dated anybody. And so when I got out here in this real world, (laughs) it was like like I had some training, (laughs) but it's nothing like being in the field. Like, let me tell you, like you think you know what test you're going to get. And then somebody comes through with something else. And you might think because somebody knows your family, they're going to treat you better. Or someone goes to church, they're going to treat you better. But they treat you the same way as everybody else. You just have to be vigilant. I know that sounds like you're ready for war, but you really do have to be getting ready for war. Like, not only do you have to guard your heart, but you got to put on your full armor of God every single day. Like, when you're out in these dating streets, you got to be about that life. Like, you got to be about that God life for sure. And you got to be willing to respect and honor God and respect and honor yourself. And in order for you to do that, you have to have healthy standards and boundaries and stick to them. You can't just say, oh, I really like this guy. Let me go ahead and just give him a little wiggle wiggle room. Oh, people get busy. It's okay that he didn't call me back. No, it's not okay. And I mean, and I'm not saying things don't happen in people's lives, but please don't give people a reason to give you excuses and then I step up when they say they're going to do something. Because for me, it's a huge red flag. And I, I hate to use terminology that everybody else has used, but I feel like it'll relate to more people if I just use that term. So <laughs> it's a huge red flag because it's like, if you're not going to do what you say you're going to do, then how can I trust anything you say? And then if I can't trust you, then how could I build a relationship with you or communication with you? Because after the things that I've been through in the past, I don't hold that against another person. But I need to see action in order for me to feel like I can even begin to start like divulging information or before I can even start to feel like I'm getting closer to somebody else or before I can even have a little bit of vulnerability showing. I'm not just going to be vulnerable with someone who I can't trust. That doesn't make any sense to me. And then long term, like I'm thinking we got God forbid, (laughs) you know, (laughs) we have kids together then you say you're going to pick the kid up from school and your kid is that sad looking kid on the sidewalk waiting for you to pick them up when you said you were going to, but you just don't show up now. Like, I know it just spiraled into a whole thing, but this is the way I think of it because it's a serious thing. And one thing that people don't tell you, but when you get married, the thing that someone does is like times 10. So if someone is, and I'm not saying this is how my ex was, I'm just saying in general, when when someone says I'm going to do something and they don't do it, it, it spirals out of control. When someone says, oh, I smoke here and there, 
when you get married is time sent. When someone says, oh yeah, I, they do like little white lies. It turns into a huge lie thing. Like it's not just little when you're with someone longer it or when you're with someone it it magnifies so any of the things that are red flags that you see already when you first get to know somebody is like a run <laughs> you know like you got i don't know what you got to do you might have to tuck and roll like <laughs> you got to do what you got to do and get out of there because it's dangerous and it's not good for your mental health you will drive yourself insane trying to make someone be something that they're not. They can only be who they are. They, you can never change and make someone who you think you deserve just because you think you deserve it. You have to teach people how to treat you and you have to go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. So when you tell somebody something and they do whatever they want anyways and they disrespect you, because let's call it what it is, it's not like a, a joking thing. If you really truly love yourself and you really truly respect yourself, when someone is not a person of their word, man is not a good sign for trust. That's not that's not me being able to build anything, a friendship, relationship, nothing with that person because I can't rely on them. And for me, I need to have people around me that I trust. I need to have people around me who I can rely on that can rely on me like I need to be the same thing. If I'm saying I'm going to do something, if I tell my friend, you know, we're going to go this place or I'm going to do this and I'm not saying things don't come up. But if I'm saying something, I mean it and I'm a person of my word. I'm not just saying it just to hear myself talk. You know, if I tell my daughter we're going to read unless like I got so much going on, I just forget. And then we do read, but I don't say a time. No, let me stop. But no, if I say I'm going to do something, I do it. The only time I would not do something that I say I'm going to do as if life happens. That's it. Other than that, I'm a person of my word because I truly believe that that's how you build trust with other people. That's how people know they can rely on you is by you saying what you mean and meaning what you say. And <laughs> so the point is, because God allowed me to meet these different types of men, men who were going to respect what I said and understand that my boundaries, like one guy, He's one of the few men that I respect in my entire life. And it's because he was honest. He literally respected my boundaries. He didn't try to, like, I don't know if I could share this on this video, but he wasn't, like, trying to push me to do or say or be anything that I that I wasn't. You know, I didn't have to, I wasn't going to change who I was regardless, but some people will try to push you to be somebody else or push you to be okay with something that you're not okay with. And this person was so respectful. And that's why I have so much respect for this person. And when he said he was going to do something, he did it. And I feel like people in their mind are going to say, well, why didn't it work out if he's such a great guy and you respect him? Because we weren't a good fit. We wanted two totally different things and that's okay. Everybody has a choice. And that's something that a lot of people don't realize when they first start dating is that you have a choice whether you like this person or not. That person has a choice whether they like you or not. And you might take a liking to someone. <laughs> I sound so old when I said that. But listen, you might take a liking to someone and be like, oh, he's cute, you know, or whatever. Or you might be like, oh, he likes God, too. You don't know if he like God or not. He, that might be the one scripture he know. No, let me stop. <laughs> No, but seriously, like when you dating and you're Christian, it's a little different because people see the cross. And <laughs> the first thing, like one of the first sentences is like, oh, yeah, you know, God can God can do this. Or like it's some kind of verse that, <laughs> yeah, you know, you could we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us or you got like. <laughs> Or, yeah, you know, his words are sweet like honey, you know, and it feeds my soul, you know, or whatever. You, I mean, people quoting Proverbs is like, I'm wise. I'm wise and I'm foolish in the world, but I'm wise. I'm wise in the world, but foolish when it comes to God, because I believe God is just God my whole life. Like, I mean, it's just a whole thing, you know, and... <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I mean, you can't blame people for trying because it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. People could be who they are and it's fine, but it's just so funny how it's like a whole different perspective. When you start to change yourself, you notice people start to change as well. Like when you start to be more successful in your life, then the people you attract are more successful. When you start to be a person of your word, the people you attract are the people who are a person, people of their word. You start to notice that people are starting to just, okay, you know, you, instead of you attracting like this type of person, you attract that type of person. And it's funny because earlier today I was having this little inside joke with God when I was crying and stuff because, well, I had a whole cry session earlier. I'm going to just go ahead and throw that out there because I've been going through um, some things personally. And it wasn't that I was crying because I didn't think God was going to come through. I was crying and praising God. I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And then I had to play um, Marvin Sapp. <laughs> uh, I think it's called Praise Him in Advance. Like it talks about thanking God regardless of the situation that you're going through. So I was playing that, I had the music blasting. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, this isn't the situation that I intended for my life in this moment, right? Because of some things that were happening in my life. And I was like, but God, <laughs> that's like my thing. Whenever I'm about to say, but, and it's about to be something negative, I put God there because no matter what's happening, I know God can change a whole situation in one second. You know, it's nothing that my God can't do. And I know some people feel like, oh, that's extreme. You always got mentioned God. Yes, because if you knew God, like I knew God, let me tell you how he come through. <laughs> you be thinking it ain't no way. And God's like, it's always the way with me. Like I make the impossible possible. And it's so true because God blessed me with $500 today, just like that. Like it was nothing. N money is nothing to God anyways. Like, and, it, you know, it's not just about the money. It's about when you call out to God, you tell him what you're going through. You tell him your, your circumstance, the things that are happening in your life. And you realize that he just comes through. God just does whatever he does. Like he does, he does the thing. Like he really does it. And when I think about the goodness of God and I think about the people that God allowed to be a part of my life and the things that they taught me and how the men, you know, a few of the men that I've, I've met have taught me something about myself and given me something that I didn't know I could receive before I met these guys at this stage of healing, at this stage of the, the type of person that I am who loves myself. It's like it's like a whole different thing. And I'm like, they done messed up now because before <laughs> before I didn't know how it felt to be treated like this before. I didn't know how it felt to love myself before. I didn't know that there was guys that could treat you well or that could respect you before. I didn't know there were guys that would be honest with you before. I didn't know there were guys who would be willing to adhere to your standards and healthy standards and boundaries, not just me making up stuff just to feel like I'm in control. No, real real things that really matter to to my core values and who I truly am in order for me to honor and respect myself and that person honoring and respecting me because of it. I didn't know, like now, I mean, they messed up because <laughs> any guy that comes now is going to have to be about it because I didn't, I didn't witness way too much. Like, it's so funny because in the past you would hear guys make all these excuses for reasons why they can't step up. And I'm not saying it like I'm trying to make a blanket statement saying all guys act like this because I know there are good guys, there are bad guys, there are good women, there are bad women. And I'm not trying to just pin down one, one sex and say that they're all this. I'm just saying I never experienced in the past, but that was because before I didn't love myself, before I didn't know God, before I wasn't working on healing, before I wasn't taking acknowledgement of or taking accountability for my actions and the things that I've done in my past. I wasn't intentionally trying to heal. I wasn't being disciplined. I wasn't doing any of those things in my life. So, of course, I would attract a different type of person. And so now that I know, whew, they they done messed up now <laughs> because <laughs> they you know some of the guys used to make it seem so impossible what you want a guy that's gonna really treat you right that's absurd are you are you serious like they be in their feelings like putting on a real good act right and <laughs> now that i know you don't have to ever worry about me 
in Jesus name. I have to say that because the, the adversary is so slick. He will push in. He will he will bring someone who will look like God, who will really be the adversary. They will look like they came from God, but it will really be a distraction. It will be really be a demon in an angel suit. I don't know if I could say it like that, but it really will be somebody like that who's slick with the tongue, whose words literally melt melt you from the inside out. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but he'd be looking fine as I don't know what. He gonna just have all of the criteria that you ever thought you wanted him in your life. And for me, that's a big red flag. Like one guy, <laughs> one guy was the type of guy that I, I was like attracted to and the type of guy who I was like, okay, this is the type of guy that I would want. He came in and he was a decent human being and everything. But I was like, nah, if it's too good to be true, that's all the adversary. Like, like I, I mean, I was so hard on this guy for like a good eight months. Like I know somebody right there was like, see, I would have been, went been like a week and then I would have been gone because I would have been like, she too much. I know. I understand. And that's your choice. And so <laughs> then I was like, oh, you know what? And, and the guy who was a nice guy who I could be cool with, who probably could have taught me some stuff, was the guy that seemed like he was my type. And he he was into the same things that I was into. Like, we both went to church every Sunday. We both went to Bible study every Wednesday. We both were the same type, had the same type of character or core values and everything, right? The other guy, he went to church. And I think we... We were on the same spiritual journey, kind of like we both rededicated our life to God the exact same month or whatever. And he didn't tell me someone else that he knew of told me that, but they didn't know my story. And so I was like, oh, that's cool that we, you know, reconnected with God at the exact same time. He was like the sweetest guy you would ever meet in your entire life, which I should have known. <laughs> no, let me stop. But yeah. And this guy was totally not the guy for me. And I was so hung up on him. And this guy probably could I could have been cool with and God could have used him to help me just learn that guys could actually be nice and everything without me feeling like I would be stuck on somebody for no reason, you know, like, but whatever, I digress. And so <laughs> I just feel like when you really start to heal, when you really start to learn things about yourself, you know what it is that you deserve in your life, what God intends for you to have in your life. And I honestly don't want anything less than God's best. I don't want a person who's going to say something that they don't mean and not follow through with action. I I want what God wants, you know, because I, I don't want to ever make a list. I just want it to be what God wants for me to have in my life. And now that I know what's possible, I'm praying. I'm praying God just protect me because... The way the distractions be coming when I get focused is ridiculous. Like, I know you think I'm over exaggerating, but it will be like, and I'm not saying this to be boastful or braggy or anything like that. I'm saying it because it might help somebody when you get into the season or if you're you're in the season now to like know what to look out for because the adversary is real slick. He's like a, a roaring lion going to and fro looking for somebody to devour, you know, and it's so true. Because he will pull out all the stops to try to get you hemmed up. And so you got to really be about that God life. You got to really be intentional. You got to really know what your hard stops are. Your your hard passes. Your huge, like, nah, this ain't for me. <laughs> you know, you got to really know what that is. Because when people come along, if you know you don't want somebody that smokes, don't date a smoker. I know that sounds like common sense, but he'd be looking good. He'd be smelling good. He'd be all the things that you think you want. You think, oh, but he's such a great this. He's such a great that. He does this. He's a hard worker, blah, 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 blah. But he smokes. That's a real hard pass because you care about your health and you want him to be there for the kids. And now you're about to bend your standards and go against what it is you truly want because you think this per nothing is better than this person. And you might say, oh, no, I know there might be better, but you're not acting like there's better. It's a difference when you say things like, oh, no, I'm healed, when you're really not healed. You say, oh, no, I do deserve better, when you really aren't acting like you deserve better. You're allowing bare minimum stuff, breadcrumbs. You're allowing guys to come in and say stuff that they never step up to. That's not you saying that you deserve more. That's you, your actions showing that you deserve not to be treated like God's best. 
That's your actions showing that you will settle for anything. That's your actions showing that you will lower your standards and boundaries for any person because they are they fit the criteria and not the core values. That's you saying that after all the work you put in, you don't deserve anything better. And if you truly want to say that you deserve better, then you have to start walking away. You have to be willing to leave. You have to be willing to just be like, okay, this person might be good in all those other areas, but this is something I can't bend on. And you wrote those things down to protect yourself. It's not so that you could be mean or cruel. And I don't know why we keep telling ourselves that we're being mean and cruel because we are standing up for ourselves because we have real boundaries, boundaries and standards. And this is for men too. Like just because she bad as I don't know what, what a body like that does not mean that she's going to give you the things that your soul desires. Just because, you know, your friends like her doesn't mean that she's going to be the right person for you. You have to make sure that it's feeding your soul, that it's really kingdom. And in order for you to do that, you have to stay focused. I know, I know, I know the adversary is so good at sending distractions because he's not going to send you something that you don't want. He's going to send you something that is appetizing to you. And so you think that you're good. You think, oh, yeah, well, this person goes to church. I'm good. But I don't know how many people got to say this. The adversary knows scripture, too. We forget that. We think that only angels, only, you know, people that came to us from God know the scripture. But the adversary can quote a scripture anytime because he wants to know how to war against us. But we have to be smarter than that. We have to learn the scripture as well so that we can combat that so that we can see, OK, it's not just one thing. This is definitely God because of this. If you say that you're not going to be with somebody who smokes, regardless of how many how many scriptures he knows, if you know that's a hard, hard, hard pass because of your health, or whatever else, then you got to go. God is not going to send you a man who is a smoker just because it's been two years. God is not going to send you anything less than his best for you. And he, if he has you waiting, it's because you're not ready or the guy isn't ready yet, or you haven't been serving long enough or single long enough for God to send you to man. Sometimes we get so beside ourselves trying to make things happen to control our life on our own when God is already in control. We forget that God is taking care of everything for us. We doing the most for no reason. <laughs> like we really be doing the most. And God is like, just relax. I got you. You don't have to do all of that. You are really doing too much right now. <laughs> like, just settle down. Simmer down. <laughs> I'm, I got this under control, you know. And the whole time we sitting there like, oh, but I got to do this. I got to hustle. I got to bustle. I got to make all of these things happen. God already opened all the doors. God's going to open one door that's going to do all the things that them 10 doors that you open didn't even do. You know, you think you're going to make this amount of money because you went through 10 doors none of those doors were for you and they all distracted you and kept you stuck you know and the one door god had for you opened up 700 different opportunities that you would have never had without god like sometimes we forget who god is like do you really know god do you do you really truly know him because if you know him you know that he's gonna come through He's never going to give you something less than his best. He's not going to give you no woman. Like you might have been a guy who's been like, okay, I've been single for a year. I've been single for three years and I just want to find my wife already. Listen, your wife wants to find you too. <laughs> no, but seriously, somebody told me once that everything that you're going through, your kingdom spouse is going through the same thing. The moments that you feel when you have a moment of like feeling like you're alone, even though you are all in one. Or feeling like having a lonely moment and not lonely because you're not preoccupied doing different things. But the moment that you have by yourself when you really sit there and you're like, and then you get over it because you got to keep on going in life. Right. But that moment that you're having or the moment of sadness when you meet another person who's not the person or the moment of sadness when you feel like you're doing everything right, but nothing's working out. Every time you're going through something and you're trying to do the best that you can and the distractions are coming in, the distractions are coming for your kingdom spouse, too. What I do in this moment that really, truly blesses me, that really, truly helps is I call out to God. And when I feel sad, when I feel weak, when I feel like the distractions are coming or somebody's trying to deter my focus or there's this guy that comes into my life who seems like a nice person, who seems like they're about action, regardless of how much action he's about. If, if God don't give me the OK, I can't be with you. You know, I just can't. And so 
whenever things like that happen, like the distraction comes in, I pray that God removes the distraction from my kingdom spouse as well, because I know the adversary is doing everything he can to keep us apart. But I pray that God builds the bridge from one person to the other, from me to him. And that every day <clears throat> we take a step in the right direction to make it at our destination when God intended us to. So we don't allow this guy, this woman to come along and distract us from what God intended for our life <clears throat> because we get impatient in the waiting season. And whenever someone hurts me, whenever, you know, someone does something that kind of hurts my heart and maybe I got a little vulnerable or I was willing to open up or something else, I pray that God protects the my kingdom spouse as well, that no matter who's in his life, that he removes the people from his life who are not good for him. And the people who are there to help him, to push him in the right direction, to to be his A team, will continuously be there for him, and and he will see through all of the distractions and all of the people who are not meant to be a part of his life. I always pray that he constantly remembers who who and whose he is, that he continues to be a leader and continues to grow in his faith every single day and his relationship with God. I pray that you know he just continues to shine and not to lower who he is to make somebody else feel comfortable that no matter what's happening no matter how good an opportunity looks that he always checks with God first no matter how good a person looks that comes into his life until I get there until he gets here that God just removes that person I don't care if they got to go ghost like Casper <laughs> like just get rid of all the distractions anything that's not leading me in God's direction and for him as well Anything that's not leading either one of us in the right direction, I always pray that he removes all of those things. And that when the time is right, that God anoints my mouth, my mind, my body, my soul, and his mind, his body, his soul, his his voice box, his everything, so that we don't have any doubt in our mind when we are in the right position at the right time. So that God is in control of everything and not my will, but his will be done. You know, that's what I want. And now that I know what God can do, <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. Like, I know you think I'm like over exaggerating. No, but seriously, like, <sighs> I wish I, this video could show you how good God is, but you really got to get in a relationship with him on your own to figure that out. Cause <laughs> the way my God is set up, <laughs> he just be about it. Like you be thinking, oh, there's no way, or oh, like, I don't even have a, it's no way. I'll be doing stuff, and I'll feel so much calmness and peace in my life. Things will be happening around me, and I'm like, oh, well, I can't get my nails done. Like, I might take these off. Like, my budget, I'm gonna have to redo my budget so much. I'm like, I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm, I'm getting rid of my debit card. I'm gonna wait until I get a new one. I'm gonna make sure that I pay whatever is, you know, due right now, or in the next month, or whatever else, right? And I'm, I'm getting rid of the debit card. I'm going to get a new debit card. I'm going to start fresh. <laughs> I'm taking off my nails. Like I'm about to, I'm about to bear it all the way down. Like bare minimum moment all the way down. I'm about to, I don't want to say rice and beans and beans and rice, but the things that I need, I'm going to get. If I'm going to one of my favorite, like, I don't want to say fast food, but technically it is fast food. Like if I'm going to Chipotle or Tropical Smoothie or Panera or something like that, it's going to have to be once a month or three every three weeks or something like that. And I get to treat myself and it'll be on my me date. And that'll be where I go and I just do something like a picnic in a park or something with my sandwich. I don't know. But I'm about to do all of that. And everything that I don't need, I'm getting rid of it. Because what's the point? I can't, I'm not trying to, I feel like God has me in a position in my life where because I see all of the blessings, all of the things that he can do in my life, I can't settle for anything less than that. I'm not living my life for anybody else but God. So if I'm not doing something that's beneficial to the kingdom, then I can't do it in my life. Like it's nothing wrong with spending time with family and friends, but be smart about it. You know, it's nothing wrong with dating, but be smart about it. It's nothing wrong with Go into church, but be smart about it. Make sure that you're in a church where God is. Like God is, of course, where two or three are gathered. God is there and your heart posture just needs to be in the right position. But make sure that you are not. Just be safe, you know, just be diligent, 
in every area of your life, making sure that you are intentional and disciplined. Because before I really got this position that humbled me, <clears throat> I really didn't have to be disciplined, you know, and of course I ate healthy, I exercised every day and I didn't, I wasn't disciplined in all areas of my life though. And so some of the things that, that came really easy, I didn't discipline myself in those areas. And so in this season, I feel like God has allowed me to be more humble. And that's one of the things I pray to most of the time is God, just keep me humble. No matter how high you take me, no matter what things you remove or add into my life, no matter what people are, are there or not there. And sometimes God will just say, don't go out, just be home by yourself. Don't do nothing. And I'll be like, okay. And those are the best moments. This past week, I, it has been, I would, I don't even want to say it's difficult. Things have been happening in my life that have been unfortunate, but I've been blessed the whole time. Like, I know you think I'm like, I'm capping or whatever, but I'm not like, seriously. I just feel so much peace. Like God is really keeping me humble in the season. He's allowing me to just start fresh, to really get prepared for the next season, to get prepared for, you know, being a better parent and really being intentional about different things in my life and not just work, but really every area of my life and not just doing things because I want to look a certain way because I have to prove something to myself, but proving something to God and being the best version of myself, you know, and God is really showing me I can't settle for less than that, because if I settle for less in a guy and a romantic partner, I'm going to miss out on the guy that God has for me. And I know you're probably like, how do you know that? I just feel like because the adversary was a cherub which is in the highest level of angels, right? I just feel like because he knows when a blessing's coming and it could be business, it could be any area, but that's why I got to prepare even harder. That's why I got to read even more scripture. That's why I got to spend even more time with God because if the adversary is planning something, if he's coming hard, if he's trying to destroy my faith, if he's trying to, to kill my joy, if he's trying to steal my faith in God, my faith, my joy, my peace, my everything that I have inside of me that God has given me my relationship with God, then I need to be ready. I need to put on that full armor of God. I need to have the breastplate. You know, I need to have the everything, the helmet, everything. And if I could remember the scripture, I would quote exactly which each piece of armor represents, but I don't know it right off. And I don't want to, I don't want to just say things just to say them, but Definitely, if you Google it, it'll come up. And I hate to be the person that says that, but oh my gosh, I've been on here a lot that long. <sighs> I got to get up in the morning. Okay. All right. I don't want to be on here too long. And let me just end with this. Once God showed me what's really possible. Like, and it was just a little bit from each of these people that taught me something about myself and really gave me a little more than what it was that I would get in the past. Like the honesty, the respecting, respectfulness, the kindness that I got from these people. It just allowed me to see what could be possible with my future person. And I'm not saying he's going to be everything because God is my everything. But I do believe that God has better for me. And I can't settle for anything less than God's best. Now that I know, they done messed up. <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not okay with somebody saying they're going to do something and not being about that action. Like in real life. And I'm not okay with someone protecting to, pretending to respect me and not really respecting my boundaries. I'm not, I'm not okay <laughs> With someone saying that what I'm asking for is too much when I know deep down in my soul that this is something that helps me respect and honor myself. And it's something that really, truly matters deep down in my soul, in my spirit to me. It's not just the like, oh, you, your feet are 10, 10, size 10. And I have to date somebody that's a size nine. So you have to wear size nine shoes. It's nothing ridiculous like that. It's stuff that it, really in my core, like it's something that's non-negotiable and it matters a lot to me. 
And if it's too much for whoever it is that comes into my life, then then that's it. There's another person that comes along who's going to feel like that's acceptable or that they will feel like they will be willing to do that for. And that's fine. They have every choice, just like I have every choice. And I choose God. I choose God's best for me. Nothing more, nothing less. And if you know that you're about to walk into this next season, getting what it is that God has for you and nothing less, put they messed up in the comments. Because now that you know who God is, now that you know that he really about that life, <laughs> now that you know that men can really respect you and honor you and you can really stand, stand your ground and have standards and boundaries, healthy standards and boundaries, and still honor and respect yourself, you can't go back. I can't go back now. I can't imagine being with someone like that. And I hope and I pray that God just removes every single distraction from my life. Any guy who comes in who's not about it, who's not really intentional, who is not going, going to respect me or my boundaries or whatever, or who isn't going to be about action, I just pray that God just removes them from my life. I don't care how much I like them. I don't care if I got to cry a whole week. Listen, it's better for me to cry a week than a lifetime being with somebody who God never intended to be a part of my life. And I mean that from the bottom of my soul. Like, <laughs> I just, I don't want to do that. I really want what God wants for my life. And I hope that you wait on God for whatever it is that you're looking for in your life, whether it's God coming to bring a new position, a new opportunity, a man, friendship, whatever it is that you have that you're looking for in your life, God hears your prayers. He knows what you're asking for. He's just preparing you in the season. He is allowing you to wait so you learn patience. Like, I, I really needed to learn patience. Thank you, God. You know, because <laughs> I was really like, oh, I want this now at this time. And God's like, no, you're not ready. And I'm like, but I am ready. And then I realized I really wasn't ready. <laughs> so just wait on God because he's going to come through. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to try not to cry. You know, I'm a crier when I talk about God. But I usually don't cry any other time. But tomorrow is the last live of 30 days tomorrow will be day 30 it went by so fast i will see you guys tomorrow for day 30 of 30 days of purpose and it will be at 9 p.m on youtube live have a good night <laughs>